Hello, everyone. It's me again. Once again, sincere thanks for your time and also your strong support. Today, I'd like to continue on our discussion on anger modulation. By now, I guess you know that anger modulation consists of both frequency modulation and also phase modulation. For this video, I'm going to make use of the cell function table in order to understand frequency modulation. This will be the part 4 series discussion on frequency modulation. The earlier on series discussion on frequency modulation, I have put the video link under the description. So please go through the video if you're keen to know more about frequency modulation. This is my email. If you have any question regards on today's discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the like and subscribe button. Please also turn on your notification bell in order to receive more information from this channel. Guys, please also give me some suggestion how to improve my delivery through the comments. Once again, sincere thanks for your time and also strong support. Like what I have mentioned on the content page, the cell function is simply as a mathematical tool to help us to solve several things on frequency modulation signal. Firstly, from the general equation of the FM signal, so this is actually the general equation for the FM signal, they can be mathematically expressed in this form. Okay, this form are all known as the cell function coefficient. Basically, later on, I'm going to show it to you how can we describe a FM signal based on the cell function table. But like what this page mentioned, this general FM signal, which is shown over here, they can be replaced by all these per cell function coefficient here. From the above equation, FM has an infinite number of frequency components on both sides of the carrier frequency. Okay, so you can see the first term is basically the carrier frequency. The next term is basically on the left and on the right of the carrier signal. Basically, you can see that they are separate by the frequency of the modulating signal. Okay, follow two times, three times. Okay, I will explain all this on the next slide. The numbers, sorry, the frequency value of this side frequency are an integrate or a whole number multiplies of the modulating signal away from the carrier frequency and are given by this expression here where n is the order of the side frequency. Okay, so let's take a look over here. So right in the middle is basically the carrier frequency. You can see that it is actually flanked by two components. Okay, so this component is separate by a distance of fm, which is the frequency of the modulating signal. So basically, we can say that this is the first pair of Purcell function coefficient. Next, you can see that on the other side here, again, it flanked by another pair of Purcell function coefficient. Now, this point here is separate away from the carrier by two times the frequency of the modulating signal. Can you see here? So again, you can see from here, they are now separate by two times. And the next coefficient on the third coefficient here, you can see that they are actually separate from the carrier by three times the frequency of the modulating signal. You can see from here. So this is the third coefficient. It's three times of the frequency of the modulating signal. On the other side here, again, you can see that basically they are separate by three times the frequency of the modulating signal. And this thing go on and on. So therefore, like what the question mentioned on the previous slide, okay, this per cell function coefficient can be represented by infinite frequency component. Like what I mentioned, this go on and on. Let's take a look on per cell function in a deeper detail here. So this is, we call a per cell function table. Okay, you can see from here, there are a few components that we need to know. So we need to know this MF, okay, which is the modulation index. So we need to know this modulation index before we can use this per cell function table. 
So right at the tip here, for example, this 7 or this 11 here, these are known as the Purcell function coefficient. So this is the original one. Then we have the first Purcell function coefficient, the second, third, etc. Okay, so this table typically okay, you can find from the internet. Okay, so we are going to show how we can make use of this table to solve a frequency modulation. Okay, so this is basically by the Purcell function. Okay, I'm not sure what does this graph actually mean, okay, but you can see that basically they are all related to the Purcell function table. Okay, for example, when the MF is equals to 1, okay, you can see that there are 1, 2, 3, 4. There are 4 important components when the modulation index is equals to 1. When the modulation index is equals to 2, okay, you can see from here there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There are 5 important coefficients. Okay, so let's take a look back on the Purcell function table. Okay, you can see from here, this is what I had showed to you earlier on on the Purcell function table. Okay, so when the modulation index is equal to 1, remember there are 4 important coefficients which I have shown to you on the previous slides here. 1, 2, 3, 4 on when modulation index is equal to 1. Okay, when modulation index is equal to 2, okay, you can see that there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There are 5 important coefficients. And from here, you can see that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, so basically, this table here, all the numbers basically will be extract and they are basically put into this Purcell function table. Okay, so this is what I have mentioned. This is actually called a Purcell function table. And very quickly, I'm going to give you an example how we can make use of this table to solve a typical frequency modulation question. Okay, let's come to the first example. For an FM modulator, where the modulating index MF is equal to 1. Okay, so this modulation, modulating index is equal to 1. A modulating signal, basically you we are given this modulating signal. Okay, from here, I can conclude that the modulating frequency is 1 kilohertz. Can you see here? And an unmodulated carrier, basically this is the carrier signal. Again, from here, I know that the amplitude of the carrier signal is equal to 10. And the frequency is from here, 2 pi f. So basically, this is the frequency of the carrier, which is 500 kilohertz. Okay, so the question tasks us to find the numbers of set of significant side frequency and draw the amplitude spectrum. Okay, let's do the first one. How many numbers of set of significant side frequency here? Okay, so this is the Purcell function table which I have shown it to you earlier on. Okay, I just make it simpler okay, so that we can put everything all in one slide. So the question given to us is the modulating index is equal to 1. Okay, what happened here is basically you can see that this is basically equals to 1. And from here, okay, I conclude that this is the carrier. And I have three set of significant side frequency. You can see here, 1, 2, 3. This is the carrier. So this is what you mean here. I have a carrier component and with three sets of significant side frequency. 1, 2, 3. So I'm done on the question A. So now I need to do the question B, which is to draw the amplitude spectrum. Okay, so this is basically the Purcell function table which I have shown it to you on the previous slide. Okay, I come up a table here. So this table here, I put whatever JN okay, on the extreme left. So how can I actually obtain all this number? Okay, so you can see from here, the JN number, for example, the first one is 0 0.77. Okay, I just drop J0 equal to 0 0.77. J1 is 0 0.44. J2 is 0 0.11. And J3 is 0 0.02. So this is the first step I need to do. I list down all the JM, or we call it the Purcell function co coefficient all over here. Okay, so next you can see from here, okay, I need to obtain this and the frequency. So what are all these? Again, let me show it to you. Okay, so this is actually the amplitude, the P amplitude. Okay, you take a close look over here. Okay, you can see that basically this is the frequency of the carrier, and this is the peak amplitude value, which is the EC J0. Okay, so this is EC J0. So how can I find this number? 
So I have this J naught and I need to find what is EC. Remember the question given to us, the EC is equal to 10 volt. Can you still remember? Let's quickly see the question here. Can you see here? This is 10. So therefore, over here, I know that this is actually 10 volt. Sorry, this is actually equal to 10 volt. Okay, next, I also need to find the frequency component. Okay, I need to know the carrier frequency and the modulating frequency. Okay, earlier on, if you still remember, okay, the carrier frequency is actually 500 kilohertz and the frequency of the modulating signal is 1 kilohertz. And if you still remember, most of the time, okay, in fact, all the time, the carrier frequency is always bigger than the modulating frequency. So just be very careful and don't make any silly mistake. You must be sure that the carrier frequency is actually much bigger than the frequency of the modulating signal. So once over here, I'm ready to do. So you can see from here, these are all the peak value here, which is shown over here. Okay, so I also need to find the frequency here. So this is the carrier frequency. Okay, so this is the carrier plus one time of the frequency of the modulating signal. So this is the carrier plus two times the frequency of the modulating signal. Again, this is the carrier signal plus three times the frequency of the modulating signal. For this example, I only have three significant coefficient. Right in the middle is the carrier and I have three. Remember, this is a mirror image. There will be another three on the left-hand side. Okay, with this, I'm ready to do on the amplitude spectrum. Okay, so remember, this is what I mentioned earlier on. This is J0. So what I need to do is I multiply by EC, which is 10. So 0 0.77 multiplied by 10, which is 7.7. Okay, again, this is J1. This is 0 0.44. I multiply by 10, which give it to me 4.4. 0 0.11 multiplied by 10, which is 1.1. For this case here, 0 0.02 from here, 0 0.02, I multiply by 10 which result in 0 0.2. Okay, next, I'm going to concentrate on the frequency. Remember, the carrier is 500. Okay, basically, they are flanked on two sides. So the first one is basically plus the frequency of the modulating signal. Frequency of the modulating signal is 1 kilohertz. Remember, for carrier, is actually 500 kilohertz. So therefore, the first component over here, which is 501, on the other side, a mirror image is basically 499. And this thing continue. So basically, this is two times the frequency of the modulating signal. So I can find that this is actually 502 here and 503. And on the other side, is also 4 498, kilo, 498 kilohertz and also 497 kilohertz. And the amp amplitude value here can be written. So this is basically for the carrier. So it's 7.7. .7. The first component here is basically 4.4. You can see from here, 4.4. Then the second coefficient is 1.1. And last but not least is 0 0.2 here. Okay, so basically this is how I actually can make use of per cell function table to draw the amplitude spectrum of frequency modulation. Okay, with this, I'd like to end my discussion. Please help to like and subscribe. Once again, sincere thanks for your time and support. See you.